Pokemon cards in themselves are great, but honestly, a lot of the fun comes from the mystery of not knowing what you're gonna get, of knowing that what you pulled was greatly against the odds. It's clear that the booster pack is an essential part of the Pokemon card experience. So we've drawn our own Pokemon cards before, and now let's learn how to make our very own Pokemon booster pack to go along with it. What's up guys, Beatgamon here, and welcome to the next episode, where today I'll be showing you guys how to make your very own hand-drawn and completely custom Pokemon booster packs, just like I have, right here. I think this thing turned out really awesome, and not only was it a lot of fun to make, but also I think it can make a really cool gift idea. Just giving someone a Pokemon card is nice, but imagine if it had its own booster pack to go along with it. Kind of like wrapping within whatever other wrapping you'd already put it in. But anyways, that's enough talking. Without further ado, let's learn how to make our very own custom handmade Pokemon Booster Packs. Alright, so your very first step will be to choose the type of paper you'd like to use. Now for this project, anything that you have access to really should work, so it's mostly personal preference. If all you have is lined paper, then go for it. You'll have lines, obviously, but the paper is totally fine. It can even look pretty cool. The only real considerations you need to make here is whether the paper is foldable, and if you'll be able to draw on it afterwards. If you're lost and don't know what to choose, then I would recommend trying standard printer paper. I've actually used that many times, and you can't really go wrong with it. It is important to note, though, to keep in mind what you'll be using for your artwork afterwards. Pencil crayons and markers are totally fine with printer paper, but for me, since I want to use paint, I will be choosing a bit of a thicker paper. So, go ahead and choose the paper that is perfect for you, and after that, you're ready to move on to the next step. Alright, so we've got our paper, and now we've got to size it to the dimensions of a real pack. What that will look like is 16.5 centimeters in length by 12 centimeters in height or 6.5 inches by 4.7 inches for my American friends. So, go ahead and grab a pencil and a ruler and measure that out, just like I'm doing right here. After that, grab either a pair of scissors, or ideally, if you have it, a crafts knife, and cut along your lines. And once you've done that, congratulations! You should now have your paper cut out to the exact dimensions a real, unfolded Pokemon Booster Pack. So here is the paper we've just cut out, and here is an actual Pokemon Booster Pack which I've gone ahead and fully unfolded. As you can see, this pack is just like ours, except that it has these creases for the various flaps and folds. So that's what we'll be outlining right now. We'll move from the left to right here, so starting with this one right here, which is exactly 5.3 centimeters or 2.1 inches from the left side of our paper. So, using your ruler, go ahead and mark 5.3 centimeters on the bottom and on the top, and then draw a line connecting them. This line is what we'll be using to fold along afterwards when we're finally ready to fold our pack. And once that's done, we'll move on to this one right here, which is exactly 1.7 centimeters from the left, or 0.7 inches. So, go ahead and mark that on the top, and on the bottom, and then draw a line between them, exactly like before. And now, moving on to the right side, we will now mark this flap right here, which is 4.4 centimeters, or 1.7 inches, from the right side of the pack. So, go ahead and draw a line connecting those, and now, we'll go ahead and mark this rightmost flap here, which is 1.1 centimeters, or 0.4 inches. And with that, we're done with all the main flaps, so all that's left to do now is to mark the top and the bottom. We'll start with the top, so go ahead and mark another 1.1 centimeters, or 0.4 inches. I do one here, on the left, and one on the right, and then connect those. We'll also now do the exact same on the bottom, so just repeat the exact process with another 1.1 centimeters, or 0.4 inches, on the bottom. And with that, we're done with the outlining. And now we're ready to start folding. Alright, so now that we have our whole booster pack outlined out, the folding should be easy. Nothing at all to worry about here, right? 
So again, we're gonna start on the left side of the pack. Watch what I do here carefully. I'll go slowly, but of course, feel free to rewind if you'd like to watch again. We'll start with this small flap all the way on the leftmost side of our pack. This one will be folding outwards. So flip your paper around onto the side with no lines. Then simply lift the paper until you see your line. And then fold right along that, just like this. Then you can turn your paper back around, back to the side with the lines, and it should look exactly like this. And after that, we'll move on to our next line. This one will be folding inwards, so simply fold the paper right along that line. You can also use your ruler here to help you make those folds as precise as possible, just like I'm doing, although of course this is not necessary. Next, we'll move on to the right side lines. This one right here will also go ahead and fold inwards. And the final line, just like before, will fold outwards. So flip your paper around and fold it right along that line. Once you flip your paper back over, it should look exactly like this. You can even, at this point, start to see exactly how your booster pack will look in the future. So, I think it'll be pretty cool, right? Alright, so at this point, we're ready to move on to the artwork. I like to do the artwork before I actually put the cards and seal the pack, since it's a lot harder and definitely a lot more awkward to have to draw around them. If you aren't doing any artwork though, maybe you're just slapping on a sticker or something, then I'll leave a timestamp right here up to the next section, the gluing part, so go ahead and click that if you're not doing any artwork. But anyways, of course I've already made a Pikachu pack using pencil crayons, and as you can see I think it turned out pretty nice. But for this one, I'm going to do something a bit more epic, and that is this insane Charizard artwork from Brilliant Stars. I think the colors on this pack just pop so brilliantly, so I can't wait to see how that translates into our artwork. Now, what I'm doing here is my pack, but what you're doing is your pack, so you can do whatever you want. I'm simply replicating this Charizard booster pack here, but you don't have to do that at all. And unless you're following along with this exact Charizard pack, yours will most likely look different. It doesn't even need to be a Pokemon at all if you don't want it to be, it could be anything. But anyways, as I said earlier, for this one, I'll be using paint. However, as always, it's important to start off any artwork with a sketch. So what I'm doing here is taking my pencil and trying my best to copy exactly what I see on the booster pack, which I'm using for a reference. As you just saw, I usually like starting off with the template elements of the booster pack first like the Pokemon logo, the Brilliant Stars logo, and so forth, before I move on to the actual artwork, which is the Charizard. I would also definitely recommend using a pencil here and drawing lightly so that you can easily erase or fix any mistakes. I know this step may seem daunting, and honestly, I'd be lying if I said even I didn't always procrastinate starting the sketch the most, far more than any other step of the artwork process. I've done many of these, and each time it's always the same for me, so you're definitely not alone. Like all things, really, starting is the hardest, but once you start, it's smooth sailing from that point forward. Unfortunately, most people never do, so if you can get past this and actually start, then you aren't like most people. So if you're struggling, just staring at a blank sheet of paper, my biggest piece of advice to you would be to just do it. Stop thinking and just put something down, put anything down, even if it's just a rough line approximately where you think it should be. Once you have something down, that's amazing, but most times it won't look right, so adjust it. And that's really all artwork is, drawing and adjusting until it looks right. Then drawing more and adjusting that until eventually the whole piece looks right. You can also use whatever you just drew as an anchor or a reference point by which everything else will stem from. Even those fiery streaks in the background were easy when I could see exactly where they should intersect with Charizard's body. What I'm trying to say here is that artwork is fluid. It's constantly changing and growing until eventually it just kind of forms itself. Everything you draw leads into something else, which then leads into something else. And as we are now moving into the painting, you'll see this 
even more. Although I am using paint, this is the same with whatever medium you may be using. Whether that be pencil crayons, markers, <laughs> chalk. Actually, I don't know who will be using chalk. Although if that's you, definitely send me a picture of that. Trust me, when I say, as I have said before, that every single artwork I've ever done, I have surprised myself with. Every time, my artwork looks far better than I ever could have imagined. With some, it's gotten to a point where I can't even believe that I did that. Quite frankly, I can't even tell you how I did. And I think it will be the same with you guys. You guys see me using paint often, and I think that paint is definitely my favorite medium to use. Precisely because it leans the most into that fluidity I was talking about. With pencil crayons and markers, once you color something, there's not much else you can do. But paint is always changing. It never looks right when you first put it down. It must be blended with other colors, with white, with black, and with whatever you have on the page. And paint really relies on whatever you have down. That's why, especially as a time lapse, you guys saw my painting start, and then just kind of spread from that point outwards. But anyways, that's enough talk. I hope, somewhere in there, I may have been able to help you with your artwork. And I'm sure you're just dying to see how this artwork turns out. So, let's go ahead and get this finished, and I'll be right back with you guys. Alright, so there we have it. With that, we have just finished this epic Charizard Booster Pack artwork. I have to say, I think this thing looks insane, much better than I ever could have expected. Although, as expected, I love the fiery reds, oranges, and yellows. Anyways, this thing looks great, and if you'd like, you can be done right here. But flipping our pack over, the back looks a little plain, especially in contrast to such a cool front artwork. So I won't go crazy here. If you're making this pack as a gift, the back might be a good place to put a little message. In place of where the set description usually is, maybe a little happy birthday, happy anniversary, merry Christmas, or whatever occasion you might be celebrating. But if not, just leave it blank. What I'm doing here is simply painting the main colors that I see on my reference pack, so pretty much exactly what I did for the front. Honestly, it isn't even that much, but it's just so that the back doesn't look so plain. But anyways, I'll be right back with you guys when we're fully done the artwork.
So, there we have it. I may have lied about not going too crazy, I think I definitely did, but it's certainly nothing compared to the front. And with that, we're now officially done with our pack. Well, with the artwork, that is. Now, let's put it all together. Okay, so at this point, go ahead and get your cards ready. That is, the Pokemon cards you'll be putting inside your booster pack. These can be anything, really. Absolutely anything you want. You can choose real cards, or you can even put your own custom Pokemon cards inside, which would be actually quite fitting for a custom booster pack, especially if you're doing this as a gift. As you can see here, I've got 8 regular common Pokemon cards, as well as an energy card, and a code card to make it really legit. But these are all really just filler. For my rare spots though, I've got this full art and completely hand-drawn Mega Rayquaza EX card, as well as this equally awesome Primal Groudon EX card. Both these cards I actually made for videos, so if you guys want to learn how to draw your very own Pokemon cards just like these, then those will be the first links in the description below. But anyways, once you've chosen your cards, place them right here, in the middle of the booster pack. Make sure that they are in the order that you want, because once you see up the booster pack, you can't change that. Unless, of course, you open the booster pack. I'll have mine the same order as a real pack, and if you guys want to copy that, here is a fresh pack that I just opened in its exact order. But after that, you'll want to grab your glue. Any type of glue should work here, but for simplicity's sake, I'll just be using our regular glue stick that I imagine most of you will have access to. But again, most anything should work just fine here. You can even use tape if you want. So now, take that glue and glue the flap furthest on the right side of our pack. Just like this. After that, glue both the top and the bottom of our pack as well. And once that's done, we want to do this relatively quickly so that the glue doesn't dry on us. But we'll fold the right side flap, the one that has the glue on it, over top our cards. And then we'll fold the left side flap over top that, pressing it down to make sure that the glue really sticks. While you're applying pressure here, you'll also want to press down on both the top and the bottom of our pack to make sure that the glue there sticks as well. But once you've done that, you're done with the booster pack. It's all done. All that's left to do now is to open it. So why don't we go ahead and see what's inside. Alright, so here it is, our completed 100% custom and hand-drawn Pokemon Booster Pack. Honestly, I love the way this thing turned out, and I hope you guys were able to make some of your very own that, of course, look much better than this one, right? But obviously, the most important part of a Pokemon Booster Pack is not the Booster Pack itself, but instead, what's inside, so we'll open it just like we would our real Booster Pack, and there we go. Beautiful, you can't tell the difference, can you? So, let's do the card trick, and here we go, fighting energy to start us off. And, well, we've got a bunch of common and uncommon cards here. They all look pretty nice, but we'll speed through these. And, oh my gosh, can you believe it's a full art card? I totally didn't know that was in here. Oh, and would you look at that, another one. That's amazing. Again, I totally didn't know that one was in there either. But anyways, I hope you're giving this to someone whose reaction might be a little bit more genuine as it no doubt will, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video where we made our very own custom hand-drawn Pokemon Booster Packs. Thank you guys, especially those who are listening to this for sticking with me all the way to the end. And without further ado, stay tuned for the next episode.